What my book here tells me is basically where it's from. My master list has more information about that site. It has more information about that site. And what I've been doing lately with that, take the old GPS thing and turn it on, and then as you move along your site, this thing tells you where you are. Okay, it doesn't have any batteries in it now. Uh, it tells you where you are. And so if I find something that I think might be important, I'm going to check this, and I'm going to put that in a special container, and I'm going to fill out a card and put the exact location where I found it in there with it now. Okay, so that I know. And what I eventually hope to do is get to all those 96 different sites and find out what the coordinates are so if somebody else ever ends up with my collection, they'll know right where they came from. They won't have to think about, well, maybe he was talking about this place. No, we'll, we'll straighten that out. Okay, um, so keep tags with the fossils, keep them numbered, remember where you find them, and then you want to keep a record in a book like this or some other book. Or in a, you know, I had a guy, uh, I went through his collection this summer, and he had a big book that uh, was a, a large book. He had everything in it, but unfortunately it stopped before he stopped collecting. And so we had a whole number of boxes of things which were very nice fossils and they said where they, some of them said where they came from. We knew they came from those locations but we didn't know which fossils came from those locations because it wasn't in the book. It wasn't, it wasn't there. The information wasn't there and the fossils weren't known. Okay? So it, that is important. Uh, after you do that, first, most of my stuff I stick in bags. I stick in little bags. These are actually big bags. I've got about four sizes smaller than this, uh, whatever it fits in. And it's either bags or boxes. And then those go in drawers, OK? You can get carried away, as Jack said. I have my own little paleontology lab. <coughs> uh, when we moved into our new house, that was the first thing that was built in the house, OK? Work bags, cabinets desk, bookshelves, you have to have information. And in doing that, you know, as you're doing this, this thing is indispensable. This thing is indispensable, okay? Uh, I've been collecting for almost 30 years. Uh, I know Jack has too. Uh, I go down to a museum and I spend the day identifying fossils, going through things all over the country. Okay, it's my job to figure out what they are. That's what I'm doing right now. What other people can't figure out what they are, they give them to me. And I still use this. I still use this. Beyond this, Ohio fossils. <laughs> you don't have a copy, Tom's back there. It's a little more expensive, but it's got a lot of fossils that this doesn't contain. Hopefully, pretty soon, Dr. Davis and Dr. Meyer are going to publish their book, which is a new book on Cincinnati fossils, which is going to contain most of them. There's over a thousand different kinds of fossils in the Cincinnati area. Okay, I don't know how many this book's got in it. Maybe 150, 125. So there's a lot of them not here. Uh, as you get into it more and the identification. Uh, you want to you want to find out more about it. That's when you uh, you start going to libraries and you start scanning these bookstores and you start trying to accumulate all the old information. And if you can't find anywhere, ask Steve because he's got it in his house. Okay. Anybody got any questions? This is the fossil kit being bagged, and this is the main source of income for the dry dredgers.
um, selling the fossil kits. What happens is everybody brings in their uh, excess fossils, the common fossils, and they bag these and they sell these to the Natural History Museum. And this brings in club for the money, m money for the club, and that's used for uh, to fund uh, educational research in paleontology. He's working hard. There's Keegan on the right and Steve Felton on the left. These are vague platystrophias. Raffinus arena, brachiopod. Horn coral. This was the Dixie field trip. They go in South Carolina. Okay, Okay. Uh, so forth. He's a singer, a guitarist, he's announcing air shows. Okay. You are here. You may not get young kids from the... Anyway, they have a city Have you ever heard of an announcing air show? Probably not. I said, yeah, I, I listen to a half dozen other air shows. He's that good. You know when they have the crash there in the air show? Rob, we kept everybody. Every air show. I saw one family leave. Go, we go. But 